Good morning, it's Carl from Studio Incar. Today we're going to discuss Michael's transit build. What a job, let's go. in the XR2 today, all right? But for you Ford boys, it's just a bit of value added. I'm sure we'll go through it at some point. First things first, Mike's a great character. He's got a couple of vans. His other van has a, a, a massive system put together by some, some great minds in the industry. I've, I've heard it, I've seen it, it's wicked. For this van, he wanted a more sort of daily approach, so things to be tucked away, stuff like that. So uh, still a high-end build, it's just, we can't be too overt in our fabrication. It has to be sort of tucked away. Other than things like door builds and pillars, of course, if they have to be there, they have to be seen, you know? So therefore their fabrication has to have a display element. I'm gonna walk you around it now. So this will be episode one. I've decided to do a two part series on, on this one because it, it's a bit, it's slightly larger than most and it's a bit more intricate. So um, spreading it, across one video would make quite a long video. And unfortunately, people just don't tend to engage with longer format videos. So yeah, this will be an overrun of what we've done up until now. And then uh, the second one will be a, a complete video with some sound, we'll see. So yeah, let's get into it. Let's go and have a look at it. We'll be handheld again today because we've just got no gimbal. So it's a pretty wicked spec van to be fair. Michael's a, um, a dog trainer, handler, does sort of high-end sort of security and close security dogs so everything has to be there's a huge box that goes in here so you don't see any of this uh, it's out over in the workshop over there um, so this all gets covered up and we can't fit that back in until we've got sound of course we don't have sound as you can see um, but yeah so this is the amp rack 51k and a quattro really neatly done and then just some little touches, like the bridges for the speaker terminals that allow us to build the amp rack on the shelf and then, um, you know, split it into the car. Very nice and tidy. And then we've got things like these little cable sort of tidies or cable, cable clamps that Stuart designed and we printed in house. And then this panel, we've shifted this panel out for 18 mil to be the amp rack to bolt the amplifiers down and then all of these were printed individually to cap so that we've gone in with stainless uh, stainless hardware and threaded bolts into the factory position. That is, is never coming off. Um, well, unless you take it off, but it's never gonna fall off. So yeah, they're in there at the moment, waiting to be set up as soon as we have sound. We'll cover the door builds in the next episode when they're complete, it's Dyn Audio mid bass going in there, sealed, clamshell design um, and then we've got we've got another couple of layers to do and some uh, and then milkshake to sort of seal the clamshell together a little bit of bracing and away we go in here There's loads of little touches in here so first things first got a 12 inch Dyn Audio Isatar driver so this whole front end will be Isatar so it'll have the 110 the 430 it'll have Isatech mid base um, just simply down to size, they don't make a larger mid base in the Isatar line. So yeah, this looks like, uh, it's a little dark in here, but it looks like a conventional box. It, it really isn't. This box took a, a long time to build. It tucks and folds around all of the sort of metal work. If any of you out there have ever tried to fit a, um, a decent size subwoofer enclosure, into this aperture it's a, it's a tricky thing to do with all the metal brackets and everything that are around and then to get it to bolt in safely you know and then on there we've got a panel with decoupling feet and then we've got the helix dsp ultra on there as well not a dsp we use all the time but a dsp we can use it's wicked we've used it a few times uh, michael's got this same dsp in his other van so we wanted a little bit of familiarity for him we don't want different ecosystems and different vans because it will just become too complex for him to use. So there's a lot in here that we've done to make the functionality similar to his other van as well. So yeah, 
couple of other little innovative touches in here are the um, director controller mount. Now, probably my favorite part of the build up to now. This is a 3D printed design that is fixed to the car. It looks OEM. When this turns on and when you're sat in the driver's seat, it's really nice to use. Um, and then over by the steering wheel, we have a printed DAP mount for his FIO. DAP is a FIO M15, I think, or an M15A. It's a, it's a high-end piece of kit. Handmade digital coax cable, so we've had to make that in-house. We wanted a right angle and we wanted it to be a particular length. And this also charges from the key, which is what the sort of large section at the bottom is for. It has to be there because we want to be able to put it in, uh, charge it up when the van's turned on. And whilst all this is, it's all wired up, so it all fires up at the moment. Uh, we've just got no front end, so um, yeah, there's just no, no tuning up until now. So yeah, that, that's some of the touches in the interior. I mean, of course, we've fully sounded in the whole front, you know, under the steps, under the floor, as high up to the dash as we can go. The carpet in these are molded around the front bulkhead, so you can't really take them out without removing the dashboard. Uh, we didn't want to do that because it's just not in the spec for this job. This job, don't forget, has to be more simple and more effective as a daily usable product than his other van, which is more sort of avert and his more sort of indulgent project. So yeah, let's go and turn it on and I'll show you the controller. The phone will probably ring now because he's got some trick alarm on here. It tells him every single thing we do. I'm sure he can see as in a workshop. Yeah, let's turn it on and well, as you can see, actually the ignition in this van, you know, it comes live with the door being open and being unlocked. So. We've got our director there, it's just turned on. We need to update the DSP. You know, it's just one of the things with the Helix DSP. It's just updates. And then if we turn the ignition on, we'll see that our DAP will start to charge. You'll have to excuse the alarm. So there's our DAP turning on. And that comes on with the with the van, or the, the charge at least comes on with the van. The DAP doesn't. The battery must be low in the DAP, and what it notices is that it's plugged in, and away it goes. Good piece of kit. We've also integrated the uh, factory head unit, of course we have. In his other van, his, his phone calls and stuff, he, he had a couple of issues with his phone calls, so we decided to integrate the factory unit into this. He wasn't really interested in doing that, to be honest, but it is the way that we do things. We want integration with the van so that if he gets a phone call, regardless of whether he's listening to his DAP or not, uh, he'll be able to switch straight back over to the van and he'll have his phone kit coming through the system. So yes, yeah, just a, a more sort of uh, functional sort of OEM approach, I suppose. Now I have to be careful with this and hopefully you can see me. Uh, this is the very early parts of the front baffle for the door build. So it's a twin eight. Uh, Dyne Audio MW182. What we've done is we've created a grill section for the front. We've reduced it, of course, um, so that you know th this can be more of a design. These can probably be two different materials as well. And then we've got a sort of hardware concealing. I don't know how far I can tilt it. Then we've got a hardware concealing hole on the front as well. So we'll probably put a 45 on this or some form of chamfer on this and on this to sort of play it down. Because, like I say, you know. Door builds aren't necessarily the prettiest thing in the world, um, but when you do have to build them, they have to be good. If you're going to see them all the time, you know they they, they really do. It, it, it's it's tricky because for a door build it has to be rock solid. It has to be you know correct for the speaker, uh, but it also has to look good as well. You know we we can of course build a a wicked solid door build and trim it in carpet, but it will just it'll look a bit gash and there's no real pride or ownership there. So yeah, it'll have all of the functional. Uh, benefits that a door build will have and then of course it will look good as well so we, we're not finished with this like I say it's early days we've got nice tight fitment around the speakers we'll knock this off with a 45 as well just to open it up uh, we'll brace between the two on it goes uh, seal it up milkshake it job done so uh, yeah that's what's going on with the front end and this is a yeah it's just a two-piece design and we've got relief for trim and basic stuff like that you know these are all you know these are all things you don't often see in our videos because the projects the projects we do do are large and we're quite involved when we're working on them so we don't really get the time but where this one is um it's here for a little bit longer 
it's a nice Saturday today and it's freezing cold outside so I thought it'd be best to kind of show you around it midway through you know it allows people to see what it is that we get up to I wish I could show you every step of every build I just we just don't have the time it, it's you know and the videos would be would be so much longer people wouldn't engage and it's, it's just a drop to the bottom so anyway that's Michael's Transit some of the touches in there are just absolutely wicked I wish they were in my car you know it's going to be rad I'm really looking forward to it you know it's a functional piece of kit there's dogs you know that go in the back so the rear end is cooled it all has to be tucked out of the way all the sound has to be in front of the bulkhead you know we don't want any booming going on in the back of the van there so yeah it's um it's a cool little project look out for episode two we're probably about two weeks away maybe not when you watch this video but two weeks away from now all right so it's like the second of december from finishing it and then we'll show you we'll, we'll show you the finished project all right i'm carl so studio in car if you've got transit transporter any van any car give us a shout if you like what we do all right take it easy